I think we're live here. Trying to check up on on this. Hang on just a sec. I don't think this camera is so great, but I don't think that we've had uh, exceptional uh, broadcast quite yet. So uh, we will see if we can make this work here. Um, I hope everybody's had a good day. I'm going to wait for some folks to stack up and we're going to uh, go ahead and get rolling. I'm going to move this forward so it's not too pixelated. Hey, Miss Rita. I love you. Rita's my fishing buddy from back at Yank. There's Miss Brittany. If you've got any prayer requests, I want you to put those down in the comments section so that we can know about it. And if you know of anybody that uh, that needs a call, needs a visit, um, I hope that you will uh, be sure and make me aware of that. Um, we want to make sure and keep track of everybody. Um, and uh, hopefully we've got some good things coming up uh, that we'll be able to tell you about here very soon. Uh, Easter is coming quickly. Uh, and I am looking, hello there, Miss Kathy. Uh, we're looking forward to, to Easter time and uh, uh, getting back together with everybody. So um, uh, I hope that, uh, that you'll keep an eye out for everything that's happening uh, here uh, at, at FBBC. Uh, but... Uh, uh, we're going to give a, just a couple more minutes and we're going to get rolling here with tonight's uh, prayer meeting and Bible study. Again, if you have any prayer requests whatsoever, I hope that you'll put those down in the in the comment section or uh, send them via text message or email, whatever suits you best. Uh, certainly use text message or, or email if it's something that you don't want to talk about privately. Uh, but... Um, uh, we want to pray for you and let you know that uh, that we're thinking of you every day. So uh, I'm not seeing any prayer requests coming in. We have several. Uh, we want to pray, continue to pray for uh, Chris Axelberg, Lori Butner, Howard Pless, Philip Small, uh, Pastor Earl Spivey, Derek Strickland, uh, Ann and David Williamson. And Dale Williamson, and continue. Thank you for prayers uh, for my dad, and uh, want to be praying for Miss Phyllis as she's traveling and and uh, sharing uh, the good news with with the folks that she uh, is is uh, engaged with. She she is on the move these days, uh, just uh, working away. So we want to pray for her, and uh, and always keep her in mind. Uh, I'm not seeing any more. Hey, Miss Evelyn. Um, so we're going to have a word of prayer. Yeah, Julia has a student at school uh, whose mother just found out that she has advanced cancer and she's beginning some aggressive treatment. This is a single mother and uh, just a, a very sad situation. So I hope that you'll remember that. But if there are no other prayer requests, we're going to go ahead and get started and, and have a word of prayer together. Father in heaven, uh, you know our needs, both spoken and unspoken. Lord, you know our hearts. Your word tells us that uh, you are a discerner, uh, uh, the, the examiner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. Father, uh, you know us inside out. Father, we ask in this moment that you would work all things together for the good and for your glory. Father, we know that uh, there are so many things outside of our capability to, to under, understand or control, but we know that you alone are God and that your plan is perfect. Father, that, that your power uh, is beyond the capability of any challenge or, or any difficulty to overwhelm. And we just pray in this moment for the many requests uh, mentioned uh, out loud and those that are that are in our hearts. 
We pray, Father, that you would show yourself strong in every situation and circumstance. Father, I pray as we move closer to Easter that you would uh, remind us of the, the, the implications of the resurrection for us, Father. Uh, uh, Easter uh, and Resurrection Sunday uh, are things that we should experience every day. The, the fact of the resurrection is, is no more uh, truthful at Easter as it is any other day, Father. It is a truth that Jesus was raised from the dead, and it should impact our lives every day. So, Father, we pray that you would manifest your presence in our lives. Help us tonight as we gather together virtually, and Father, help us to look ahead to uh, days when we will be back together, and Father, those we hope will be uh, very soon. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, just to kind of kick things off with a question, I want to ask you, uh, what did Paul mean when he made the statement in, uh, I think it was 1 Corinthians, um, I die daily. Um, you know, moving uh, toward Easter, moving toward that time of year that we celebrate the, the resurrection of, of Jesus, uh, uh, is is a time uh, that we should use to to kind of refocus it and and uh, and recenter ourselves and uh, and to think about the implications of what Jesus has done for us as believers and um, I'm going to share with you uh, we we kind of hit on some of this Sunday um, you know when we read the scriptures we see a dedication and uh, uh, a a willingness to to go with God in the early church that might be considered kind of radical today. And uh, the thing that you and I need to understand is the cross is a radical thing. Uh, uh, God was dealing radically with the issue of sin in the cross of Jesus Christ, and and the radical nature of the cross uh, should should teach us uh, about the radical nature of relationship with Jesus and the radical nature of, of faith in him. I want to share with you just uh, a, a quote here. Uh, the cross of Christ is the most revolutionary thing to appear among men. The cross of old Roman times knew no compromise. It never made concessions. It won all its arguments. By killing its opponent and silencing him for good, it spared not Christ but slew him the same as the rest. He was alive when they hung him on the on that cross and completely dead when they took him down six hours later. That was the cross the first time it appeared in Christian history. After Christ was risen from the dead, the apostles went out to preach his message, and what they preached was the cross. And uh, when it says it slew its opponents, it's certainly not talking about uh, our opponents, about our enemies or those who disagree with us, when the opponent of the cross is the one hanging on it. Jesus said, uh, if any of you would follow me, you must take up your cross and follow me uh, daily. We, get, we have to carry our cross. It, essentially, we have to uh, place ourselves uh, at the mercy of Jesus. And, and also, uh, there is an element of death that comes with the new life in Jesus Christ. Uh, it's in uh, Romans chapter 8 that Paul says uh, that we must mortify. We've got to put to death the deeds of, of the flesh. And if we would follow Jesus, if it's our desire to follow Jesus, then there is a certain self-denial that, uh, that must happen. And, and this is what Paul is talking about. He says, every day uh, I die. I put self to death daily. Self is the most dangerous element of of Christian life, we can can be so apt to getting in our own way, uh, can't we? Can you think of a time? And I, I'm sure every one of us can. We can think of a time where where we uh, were our our own worst enemy. We caused uh, issues and and, and failures uh, for ourselves, and, and and that's certainly still the case because every one of us are affected by this thing called sin, this disease, this sickness of the human soul. And because of sin, you and I uh, stray from God. Uh, Romans chapter 3, Paul said uh, that there is none good, no, not one, that, 
that there is none who seeks after God. Uh, he says their, their mouths are as open sepulchers. Uh, he's talking about the whole of humanity and the effect of sin on humanity. When we understand the, the gravity of sin, it's not until we understand the gravity of sin that we can understand the salvation and the grace of Jesus Christ. And when we have been made partakers of that grace, the Bible calls upon us to put some things to death. Uh, Paul said, uh, old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Jesus has, has saved us to, to rescue us from the reality of, of a place called hell. Hell is a real place. And there is a coming day of the Lord, as we talked about last Sunday. There is coming a day when we will either meet Jesus uh, in this life as he returns again, or in death, we will meet him and the only thing that will matter, the only thing that will stand between us and a devil's hell is Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that what we do with Jesus affects our eternity. Who is Jesus to you? How has the cross changed your life? The cross is a radical thing and the, and the cross of Jesus calls upon us to give ourselves to him radically uh, to, to seek to serve him, radically put to death the deeds of the flesh. It's a it, it's kind of a foreign thought because uh, we we tend to convince ourselves that that the status quo is okay, but God says no, the status quo is not what what I've created you for. He says I've saved you from hell so that you can serve me in this world and change the lives of other people through through the gospel of Jesus. You and I uh, I would rather be known, and I hope that you would too, as a radical for Jesus, someone who is radically dedicated to serving Jesus, rather than being one who compromised and accepted the status quo um, for my life and certainly uh, for the extent of, uh, of our uh, influence of the world for the gospel. Uh, you know, it, it's easy for us to get to get downtrodden and defeated and, and, and see the, the dark things in the world and all the things that are happening. But the reality is that, that God is not limited by what's happening, uh, whether it's in government or, or the court system or anything else. God uh, will do through you and through me what we allow him to do. And uh, it, it ought to be. And I think that that uh, any person who knows Jesus uh, should have an ambition to to see the world made a better place, to to see uh, people's lives change through the gospel. And uh, uh, we can only do that if we uh, accept what Jesus said: that we must also take up our cross and follow Him. The cross was an instrument of death. And again, it, it, we think maybe maybe you're thinking, well, that sounds like a morbid idea. Well, no, it's not a morbid idea to think about sinful self getting out of the way. Uh, he's not saying that we ought to to physically and, and literally put ourselves on the cross, but he's he says that we should literally call upon him and submit ourselves uh, to him and to deny self to serve him. Uh, when we think of the cross, uh, I want to share this with you. If Jesus said again in Matthew 16, 24, with perfect knowledge of all this, uh, of everything that the cross was, Jesus said this. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So the cross not only brings Christ's life to an end, it ends also the first life, the old life of every one of his true followers. It destroys the old patterns, the Adam pattern in the believer's life and brings it to an end. Then the God who raised Christ from the dead raises the believer and a new life begins. Uh, if we study the book of Romans uh, very, very long, and I think it's Romans chapter 5, uh, Paul talks about the, the old Adam and the new Adam that that. Uh, Adam brought sin into the world and Jesus came to defeat sin and to be the cure uh, essentially for sin. And uh, 
uh, as you and I follow Jesus, uh, we can't get away from the reality that knowing him causes things to change. You cannot come into contact with the one who the Bible says uh, was in the beginning with God. All things made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. This is John chapter 1. We can't come into contact with the God of all creation in the person of Jesus Christ and not be changed. Jesus makes clear that to know him is to follow him. To know him is to change our lives. It doesn't mean we do everything perfectly. If any one of you out there says they're perfect, never sin, well, I'd like to get some lessons for you. Call me collect. But if we realize who we are as fallen creatures and we realize who he is as the savior of all creation, the one who died so that we could live, then there should be a desire to follow him. The Bible calls upon us to put to death the deeds of the body. Romans chapter 8, verse, uh, verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you by the Spirit, and this is the clincher, if you by the Spirit put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. God's not calling upon you in your own power and according to, to your own uh, uh, determinations to change yourself. He says it's by the power of the Holy Spirit living in you. Aren't you glad that God doesn't just throw us out there after we're saved and, and say, figure it out? He's a God who loves us, gave himself for us and said, Lo, Jesus said, Lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. Uh, you and I are promised the power of God's abiding presence to to lead us, to guide us, to empower us, to overcome the broken patterns of our own existence. And Sunday, uh, something that I wish I could have ex expanded on is that idea of broken patterns, generational sin. Jeremiah talked about this in, in the life of the, the children of Israel, that there was generational sin passed down from, from uh, elder uh, to the next generation and to the next and to the next and so on. Uh, you and I, through the power of Jesus Christ, can be the ones who break the patterns, not only of generational sin, but the patterns of sin that are obvious to you even now through the convicting power of the Holy Spirit alive in you. We know where our faults and failures are. I, I think that that uh, it, it's it's foolish to to say that people uh, generally don't know where their their points of of failure are. I know mine. When I lay my head down on the pillow at night, uh, I can certainly think of ways that I failed. There are sometimes that we do uh, just screw up and and uh, uh, maybe. We don't realize and it's only through the power of, of God's convicting uh, uh, presence that, that we acknowledge it. But all of us can think right now of areas where we need to improve. Areas where we need to break the patterns, put to death the deeds of the flesh. This is what Paul's talking about. And this is what the cross calls us to. Radical confrontation of sin. And the first step in moving in God's direction is acknowledging the problem. You and I are called to put to death the works of the flesh. If we're wise, we will do what Jesus did. Endure the cross, despise its shame for the joy that is set before us. To do this is to submit to the whole, submit the whole pattern of our lives to be destroyed and built again in the power of an endless life that only comes through Jesus. And we shall find that it is more than poetry. Listen, stick with me for just a minute. 
And we shall find that it is more than poetry, more than sweet hymnody and elevated feeling. The cross will cut into our lives where it hurts worse, sparing neither us nor our carefully cultivated reputations. It will defeat us and bring our selfish lives to an end. Only then can we rise. Jesus died. The cross was the instrument of Jesus' death. But the outcome and the product of the cross was the resurrection. It's painful. It's difficult. But there's resurrection on the other side of the cross. And that resurrection is where hope is for you and I. The resurrection of Easter uh, is uh, God uh, saying that the old can be put to death, sin can be put to death, and I will remake you and raise you up again in the image of Jesus Christ. That's power. That's hope. Only then can we rise in fullness of life and establish, establish a pattern of living wholly new. Listen, God wants to make you new. God wants to make me new. God wants to deliver us from the power of sin. He wants to deliver us from hell in eternity, but he wants to make his presence a reality in my right now, in your right now, in your presence. God wants to, to change, deliver, and and raise us up so that we can be his people and serve him faith, not only faithfully, but serve him well. A life new and free and full of good works. There are a bunch of people in the world today that want new life. They need these patterns to be broken. I think there are people who are desperate to see something make the difference. We can spend our whole lives waiting on things to change or we can pursue the change. We can uh, give ourselves to the Lord. We can give ourselves to Jesus Christ to, to know him and to, to be loved by him and to love him. And we have the promise that he'll give us the power, the strength, the endurance to do what needs to happen. You know, I think that the message uh, of the cross is, is difficult for, uh, for the world to understand. I don't think they can understand it without uh, knowing Jesus. But the message of the cross is uh, all at once, uh, horrific because it deals with sin it deals with god's heart toward sin but at the same time it is something great and beautiful if it wasn't for the cross we wouldn't have any hope if it wasn't for the cross you and i uh, couldn't live we couldn't live fully if we want to live, if we want to know true life, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and having life, have it more abundantly. If we want life, we first have to accept the implications of his cross. We first have to accept that sin must be acknowledged. It must be laid before Holy God, we have to do what hurts. We have to do what is difficult, knowing that at the other side of the cross is resurrection and newness of life. Without him, without Jesus, you have no hope. I have no hope. Without him, hell is our end. But thankfully, if you know him today, uh, you can say that you, uh, you've been forgiven. You've been given new, new strength, new, uh, new, uh, uh, a new view, new vision of, of what the, what life means. 
and uh, uh, the cross is is more than just something that we hang around our necks. It's more than something that we sit at the on the tops of our steeples. The cross has real implications for every believer, and it is an invitation to come and die that we might live. Uh, life, uh, the only real life is the life that's lived in him. Uh, listen to this. Paul said, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. Uh, Paul uh, said this in uh first uh, chapter 15 of first Corinthians uh, the resurrection is a real thing uh, the and uh, our Savior is alive today uh, Islam cannot say that Buddhism cannot say that Hinduism uh, uh, worships a, a uh, pantheon of gods and they cannot say that their God is alive today but we can. And the implication of his cross is that sin equals death, but the implications of his resurrection is that he is the life for you and for me. He's power. He's all that we need. Uh, Paul said, I die daily. And you and I have to die daily. Every day we've got to put to death the deeds of the flesh so that we can live for him. Every day we've got to acknowledge sin for what it is and deal with it. Paul saw his life as a daily death of self. And he uh, expressed this that same idea to the believers at Ephesus. He said, I do not account my life of any value nor as precious to myself if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Because Paul chose to put self to death, to deal with the reality of sin, God used him in an enormous uh, way. Uh, Paul faced things that were unimaginable, but at the same time, he faced an unimaginable weight of glory that was his through Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, uh, so often we face hard truths and, and they're difficult for us to to uh, wrap our minds around and, and uh, to grasp but father uh, uh, the reality uh, that we uh, see as Christians the reality of the cross the implications of the cross are that uh, the cross is at once a thing of of, uh, of cruelty of, of of uh, uh, it, it represents your uh, heart towards sin that that sin must be dealt with radically that sin ultimately leads to death but the implications of the death burial and resurrection of Jesus also tell us that where sin uh, equals death uh, the resurrection is the promise of life and hope and power uh, Father, today I, I pray that not one person under the sound of my voice uh, is, is without the hope of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that they would see that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, you have saved us so that you could be our Abba. Father, we may li we live in a world where so many people don't know what it is to, to have a father who who loves and cares but even those of us who do know what that is father uh, we have a, a heavenly father in you that loves us with a love beyond our capability to understand and, and that's why your word tells us that we are saved with the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father you are our abba you are the the father god who has uh, given his only begotten son so that those who trust in him by faith uh, could could be not only 
the friends of God, not only saved by God, but your word tells us that you adopt us into your family and you become our Abba. Father, I pray today that we would understand the hope of the gospel, that we would understand what we need to do to serve you faithfully. Father, I pray that you would uh, put to death the deeds of the flesh so that we could live uh, in righteous, holy lives, lives that exemplify the gospel of Jesus Christ. As old R.G. Lee used to preach that payday, will come someday. There will be a day of the Lord. There'll be a day that we meet you face to face. Father, I pray that we will go uh, through this life, living in light of eternity, living in the joy of the Lord, living in such a fashion so that when we meet you, we hear those words, well done. Father, turn our hearts toward heaven. Turn our hearts toward the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus as we draw closer to Easter. And I pray that you would glorify yourself in us and help us to live with that hope, Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. I hope that we will see all of you very soon. I hope that you'll encourage somebody that if they feel comfortable to come and be with us on uh, on Sunday morning. And uh, 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 I'm going to be talking to the deacons over the next couple of days. And, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to have some, some cool plans to talk to you about. But uh, uh, until then, we will see you very soon. I hope that uh, you'll let us know if there's anything that we can do to help you, pray for you, anything at all. Uh, but remember, as you go through the rest of this week, the cross is a call to live differently. The cross is, is uh, an invitation. The cross is a command to come and lay ourselves down at the feet of the Lord God Almighty, who loves us so much that he gave his son for us. And uh, we have the promise that when we do that, he will empower us to be all that we need to be and be all that we can be for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Uh, I hope that you have a good rest of your week. I hope we'll, uh, that you'll rest well tonight and have a good day tomorrow. But uh, uh, I hope that we'll uh, hear tale of, of each and every uh, person uh, who is a part of, of our faith family. Uh, be in the brightest lights for the Lord that they can be. We'll see you later.